Woo! You play, yeah. Yeah, but dabba do. Play uh, that trumpet, old old Mike Smith. Gooby dooby doo. Uh, the where are you? To, tonight, the air is hot, and we are uh, broadcasting live from uh, Jazz Cella. Yes, it's, Jazz uh, Cella. We uh, we both tried to get our tickets to Coachella this weekend, uh, but turns out. Um, they're very expensive. They're like 500 bucks a pop. Yep, can't uh, afford that. But uh, Jazz Cella was just happening in the uh, alleyway behind uh, the Viper Room. Yeah, so and we... they pay you to go to it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. No, so we got a, uh, a $50 government bond, and we're here. Uh, and... The music is it's great, uh, but it looks like they're just kind of uh, walking off stage right now. Um, yeah, there they go. There they go. Well, I guess we're going to have to wait and for the next set. They're gone. That's uh, okay. But that's okay. There's plenty left of uh, Jazz Cella coming up here. Mm -hmm. Um but, but uh, Parker, are you enjoying the show so far? I really am. I, you know, people say all jazz sounds the same. And I say, well, that, maybe you have a point. But, but you know, you know it also it's sounds fun the same. and yeah. it's similar. Exactly. And I like that about it. I like it's, it. It's comforting. It's, it's comforting like, and it's consistent. It reminds me of the time, you know, in America where, you know, booze was illegal Yes. And uh, people were a little bit more miserable. And we're pretty miserable in our society right now. So yeah, it harkens back to, you know, the times of ore. It does. Say. Unhappiness. There's a lot of ore being mined at the time as well. Yes. Um, ore. Ore. <laughs> it's what's for breakfast. Ore, hey. it's what's for breakfast. <laughs> speaking of breakfast, they, uh, I really like the food they provided here. At yes. this event, it's, uh, it looks like partially eaten Applebee's leftovers. Yes, yeah, yeah. just from down, down the road there. And, yeah. and then they also have a uh, special tent uh, it's a homeless person's tent, but they serve uh, remainder shrimp tempura that was left over from uh, the Chinese restaurant that's just, just a couple of uh, blocks down. Yeah, and it's not bad. It's cold. They're shaped, it is cold. It's cold, but they're shaped like saxophones. Yes, So it and that's goes fun. well with the theme. And I it's, think that's just how shrimp are shaped, but it's, it, you know, it works. It's festive. It's 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 great for, for this festival. I'm having a ball. I've only lost my wallet once. Haven't found it yet, but uh, yeah, I hope we find that. Yeah, that would be I, that would be nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and you know what? Way better than going to to, to Coachella this yeah. weekend. Yeah, Coach that, Coachella, am I right? There's Coach a bunch of coaches on stage, <laughs> right? <laughs> I had a Coachella one time. She made me run five miles. Hey, uh -oh. there it is. Whoa. Uh, coach humor, am I right? Coach humor, classic wow. comedy. Uh, uh. Well, uh, while we're while we're here, while we're waiting for the next set to start up, you, you want to feel like doing a a little podcast? We could uh, have a little murder cella. Uh, yeah, murder a little, some time at murder uh, cella. Little slippery slidey podcast. Yeah. a little murder. Does anyone cella. else want to be? A, no, okay, no one else. Wants Anybody want to join? It? No, I don't. Uh, nobody I, over here. No. Either. Nobody on this yeah. side. Well, they've pretty um, much all started. They've gotten ill. I think it might be the food. But. Yeah, they're. Um, a lot of people vomiting. Here. Yeah, it's no, not, it's, uh, not 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 a not not a place where you want to be stepping. Um, no, you gotta so watch we, out. So we won't move. We'll just wait for the next set. To we come will on stand we'll, in place. We'll uh, murder Chella. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Yes. Um, uh, so, so. What, what, it's been a while since we've we've done one of these things. I think it has been quite a while. You know yeah. what? It was the last one we did. Is we tried doing a full length Oscar roundup. Yes. We were on. We were out in the middle of the desert. Mm -hmm. We had a horse um, that had legs that were only two feet tall yeah i believe we did i believe it was two feet and yes. then uh well to, to recap on that maybe we'll maybe we'll release that that audio the little bit that we have uh but yes. uh we got we eventually we made it out of the desert we uh we got to the end the horse everyone was fine killed the horse ate the horse uh the horse was tasty it was delicious yes but uh now we're we're back and uh we're we're enjoying some jazz we're here we're jazzing it up a couple of jazz boys. Planning a horse funeral. Just all the standard stuff. All the standard things. Yeah. Um, and a lot has happened since the Oscars. Yes. Um, you know, we... Uh, Say that again. We got we got new... Uh, we got new dish towels in the apartment. That's that fun. Big, yes. Yeah, that was exciting. That was exciting. That was, it was also too needed. many dish towels. Yeah, yeah too we did need towels. more. That's true. Uh, what else? Um, what else has happened? Um, went back to the old CO for a little bit. Yes, you did. You took a little, uh, took a, little vacation a little, this past little, weekend. Little, little one, two day vacation. Yes, uh, back to the old, the old mountain state. I don't know if that's what it's called. Yeah, it was sure. It's mountains. The in old it. Colorado state. <laughs> Col they it's, call it. it's Colorado, not Colorado. It's uh, yeah, Hermione Granger. It's a, yep, it's a yeah. reference. Um, yeah, no, it was my brother's uh, confirmation, which. Um, 
it was it was it was delightful. It was a it was a great little mass. Uh, the bishop was there. I don't know if the, when the bishop comes into town. You know it's going to be a real special day, and it's always signified by that big pointy hat that he wears. Does he really wear the pointy yes, hat? Yes, the pointy like, hat is... Do all bishops, I should say, do they all wear the pointy hat, or is that more of like a Vatican-specific thing? No, all bishops wear the pointy hat. That's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. That is... And then... The, the, that's a perk. The, so the that's odd thing is is that they wear, like, the pointy hat when they, like, go in and out of Mass, and then, like, during communion. But every other time, they take the hat off, and there's a guy whose sole job is to hold the, the bishop's hat. Really? Yes, he has, he wears like kind of like an altar server robe, but he's like a, a 50-year-old man. The hat holder. Yes, he's oh. and he holds the bishop's hat. That's like his job. Wow, for a second I thought you were going to say there's a guy under the hat. No, and but... And I was going to say, of course, that's why he wears it. That would be way more entertaining, and I feel, like, I feel like... I feel like a lot of people would be well more um, akin to joining up with Catholicism if a person like that did exist. Yeah, just a, just a, a little Bishop Junior. Exactly, a Bishop Junior. Yeah, little, little Bishop. A little Bishop. Um, and uh, so that didn't happen. So, so there's a so man that, that holds happen. the hat. Yes. Is it, is it, it held on a pillow, a ceremonial? You, no, he just holds it in his hand, sort. like palms up, two hands, and it's the entire time. The entire, the, uh, most of it. Yeah. That sounds tiring. Well, it's <clears> the, the the saddest part is that that job is easily like suited for a twelve year old. Yeah, like, it's it's a fifty year old man. The That's, fact that this man is like you this question old, how he got to this point. I think he it's just a part. So he's got like one guy who holds the hat and like one guy who holds the staff. Oh, um, I forget what the staff is exactly called, and I'm sure my uh, my uh, nuns from Catholic school who taught me all of this stuff are like spinning in their their chairs because they won't die. They, they're not spinning in their graves. They are eternal. They are eternal. I had a my principal sister Edith was like ninety when I was in. Uh, kindergarten, and she's still kicking it today. So that can't be right. That's crazy. Well, it felt like that to us. I mean, Sister it, it was might very, be right. It was a very intimidating force when you're really little. Very nice woman, but um, very intimidating when you're a small child. Interesting. Anyway, yeah. so the, so yeah, this bishop he's got two guys, and it's so sad watching like old men like <laughs> carry a hat and a stick for for another old man. Yeah, I wonder. You have to wonder. Is that like the you know, the equivalent of apprenticing a bishop. Is it like you, you're you the hat holder for a few years, maybe you work your way up to staff holder, and then eventually you get to wear this. That uh, rarely happens. Hat this, okay. That rarely happens. Never mind. Yes. Yeah. Um, That's disappointing. I so, I thought it was maybe like an internship kind of thing. No, 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 no. no. You're, if you're a hat holder, you're pretty much a hat holder forever. Like, you wow. might, you maybe, you go to like another church and you like be like your own priest for a little bit, but it's more of like a lateral movement than it is like a uh, diagonal or an upward. Movement. Right. So it's really all about like how nice is the hat you're holding. Exactly. It's and about so this, the hat quality. It's a pretty nice hat. But what I was going to say is that underneath the big pointy hat is like this little um small it looks like a yarmulke but it's like not a yarmulke okay you, you know the, like the little, little hat that little cap that pope francis wears yes that yeah. thing like he wears one underneath his pointy hat little pope cap yes yeah. little okay. pope, pope cap so pick yours up at target today <laughs> the little pope cap yeah okay so i so he has like a hat under a hat right yes i wonder if he ever takes all of the hats off in any situation. I've never seen a bishop's bare uh, head. Exposed head. Exposed head. Wow. I'm sure there's like a little little bit of gold under there if you if you look at it in the right angle. But yeah. um, you, you need special keys to get underneath the little hat. Yeah, I would think maybe if he takes it off, like some butterflies flutter out or right, something. Right, or moths. Yeah. It might be a little bit more realistic and more it realistic but um, sadder yeah <laughs> i just like to like imagine like a little a little fan under every bishop's uh little hat it's just a little family of, of birds yeah just, like a little nest yes like a, a little, little nest a little robin's nest you know a little, a little dad bird read the paper mom bird you know also reading the paper kids reading the paper the um, whole family reads the paper. Very, very well, well read, read family. Yes, very well, they're up to date. They're uh, the yeah. red finches. So they're uh, that makes sense. There you go. Oh god, it's been a long day. Yes. Um, so, but yes, it was. These lovely. are our jokes. Got to got to meet up with the brother. My mom and dad were very happy. Got That's my uh, got my brother a little couple of little nice confirmation gifts. So it was it was nice. It was a, it was a fantastic weekend. That sounds great. What have you been up to, bud? You know, I've I've been having a good time. I went uh, went last weekend with our other uh, roommate Zach, who is here in spirit as ah, always. Yes, indeed, he's uh, not not in the car tonight. But oh wait, I, th I think there might might be a uh, oh. something under under the hood. Zach, Zach, are you in there? Are you are you there, buddy? 
It feels like open up the glove box. I feel like it might be in there. Oh no, it's just a rat. Ah, uh, it's just a rat. Darn it. Well, sometimes they sound similar, it's, but it's not not that he's a rat. Not that he's course. a rat. No, it's, it's just, just that, that we have a rat that's very human it's in its huge. movement. It's a it's very large rat. It's a human-sized rat walks that kind on of two squeezes legs. its way into the car. Yes. I can't even describe it. It's it's really a sight to behold. It's a problem. It it's, might not even be a rat. It might. It might it's just, an unidentified animal. Right. Um, some new species, perhaps. Anyway, I'm anyway. sure we don't have to worry about it. Right. But Zach, Zach, but Zach, so I guess Zach's not, he's not physically here. here but, yes, you know, he's not physically here, but he's um, always here. Right? He's always here with us in, in spirit. spirit. Um, and anyway, so we went uh, with a couple of uh, my old friends from Chapman and saw Ready Player One oh. last weekend, which was fun. Um, and then... The movie was it was you know it wasn't my favorite but it was it was enjoyable it had was, it had it had its moments Was player 1 not ready? I don't think I was ready for player 1. Uh, and when player 1 came on I was like I'm not feeling it. I'm just not ready. And right. so You got to be ready if you're going to see player 1. Exactly. Um anyway, so I clearly know what the movie's about, but uh we Went to the movie, and then afterward, this was really where, where things got exciting. We went to uh, the restaurant Umami Burger. Ooh, Mommy. Uh, mommy's Burger, I guess, is the translation. That's not right. That's yeah, not what it can't is. can't be right. Um, yeah, it's like, a, it's like you know, a home-cooked burger. It's, it's your mom's burger. It's the way you remember it when mom cooked it. That's not. I don't think that's what they're going for at all. I doubt. But, I doubt it. But but it's it was it's a good place, and they have the Impossible Burger there, Ooh. which is as you and I know, we are vegetarians. In, oh, and, we are. Uh, I always forget that. We yeah. probably shouldn't have eaten that horse. Ah, uh, wow. I didn't think about I, that. Lent is over, so it's fine. The horse is an animal. That's right. So I wasn't. Yeah, that was bad. That was bad. Bad move well, on our part. Oops. We'll, we won't eat the horse next time. Next time, when we have a horse and it is is dead, we won't eat it. Um, moving on. So, anyway. Umami Burger, uh, great place. Um, very good burgers, but the Impossible Burger, it's basically a vegetarian burger. It's a plant-based patty that tastes so much like beef. It's crazy. It tastes so much like real meat that you start to wonder, is this just beef that's more expensive and they're just trying to get me to pay more and I'm sacrificing my morals if you're, you know, a very cynical person like impossible. me. But it's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. But it apparently is all plant-based and it's very tasty. So we had those. It was great. But we had a waiter slash uh, bartender we were sitting at the bar <laughs> who uh, I've never met a person quite like this. Uh, nice guy. Very nice guy. But we were talking about the movie Ready Player One uh, everyone I was with had read the book. I had not read the book beforehand, and they were saying there's all these differences in the book compared to the movie. And the waiter said, oh, yeah, I know. Like, in the book, these characters die, and this guy explodes. And, and my friend Noah just goes, he, he, hasn't, he hasn't read the book. He hasn't read it. We've read it. He hasn't. Don't, don't say anything. The guy's like, and then this character says, it was this person all along. <laughs> Just the most revealing things that weren't even in the movie. So, so this, this waiter, he has no concern for for any any potential literary fan. No, he was a human spoiler alert. <laughs> and and he, so he says that. So that's already, like, I'm kind of like... That's annoying, but also kind of funny that he just blew all that out, just destroyed it. And Noah just gives me this look like, well, it's ruined. And then Noah says, yeah, I also saw The Quiet Place. It's really good. You guys got to see it. Or A Quiet Place, I should say. And the waiter says, oh, yeah, and you don't know that she's... And then he says this other spoiler, or I don't even know if it was about a female character, something. He's like, this person does this, and... And we were all like, what? You're just, you're ruining the movie. Don't say anything more. And he said, no, that was in the trailer. And we were like, we've seen the trailer and it's not in there. So now we know it and we don't want to. And he said, well, it's okay. I won't spoil anything else about the movie. But, and then he says something else. And then th at this point, the woman next to us, we don't even know her. She's just sitting at the bar. She turns to him and says, hey, I'm, man, I'm literally seeing the movie in 20 minutes. I have my <laughs> ticket. Don't say anything oh, more, so now please. other people are getting involved. So the restaurant is now... <laughs> teaming up with us in opposition to this waiter's spoilers. And it keeps going, and it just keeps going to different movies that we don't want to hear about. It's like this guy's seen somehow every advanced screening of everything. <laughs> and finally Noah just goes, Star Wars! Just talk about Star Wars! We've all seen it! And he starts talking about Star Wars, and we're kind of safe. 
and oh, so many other things. I mean, so many threats were made by my friend. One of my friends said, I'm going to walk out of here and not pay for my burger. <laughs> and the police are going to come up to me and say, you didn't pay for your burger. You can't do that. And I'll say, this guy was spoiling all these movies. And the police will say, yeah, that's understandable. Never mind. And I, I don't think he was kidding. I mean, he almost left. And so... We got out of there, and it was hilarious. I mean, I expected to, like, lift up the bun of my burger, and in ketchup, it would say, <laughs> Kaiser Soze is, and I would go, no, and just throw the burger. It was insane. Did you give the guy a tip? Uh, <laughs> I gave him a, a bit of a tip. Uh, service was not great, but it was okay. Uh, my friend He did Noah, deliver the food to you. He did. Which, the I food mean, reached us, which that, was That's, good. like, 90% of, you know, the waiter's... Or I guess a server's job. Yes, perhaps not all of the promised dipping sauces reached us, which ah, was unfortunate for the so fries. You've got to knock but five percent. Knocked right off there. a little bit, not to be too harsh, but you know a little bit. And then my friend Noah said, "I didn't even tip. I just wrote spoilers in the tip <laughs> line." And I said, "That's perfect." And then he said, "Actually, I did tip a little bit, but I hope he did actually write spoilers because it was it was insane. I mean, nice. it was just." Cooper, if you had been there, you would have exploded. It uh, was just the worst. I, it's, you, and he just never stopped, and he kept saying, I won't spoil the movie, <laughs> but... That was his catchphrase. I won't spoil the movie, but... Insert spoiler for the movie. Like, he would just immediately... And Zach, at one point, our roommate said, Every time you say you won't spoil the movie, you spoil the movie. <laughs> and we were like, yes, that's consistent. And anyway, so that was that was really something. Wow. That, was, a, that was my weekend. I think my favorite part of the story is when the woman, who's like not even a part of your conversation, even, yeah. is just goes, I'm going to see it in 20 minutes. Please, <laughs> for the love of God, stop talking. And she said it was <laughs> such desperation. I mean, it was just a, a woman just on the edge of her wits. Like, she was just so bothered and it was so funny yeah we didn't even know her i'd just... like to imagine that that just that's just that guy's bit like, yeah like he just does that all over the place because because the, spoiler is, man the movie theater was close by it right? was about it, like the movie theater we were in a big mall it was like across the way from the restaurant we were in so like you just cross and walk by this little fountain go like right across the street basically or the, the middle of the mall, and you get to the theater. So we were assuming he must just, like, get off work and see movies all the time before, you know, he has such close access to a theater that he can just see movies before most other people do, and then <laughs> he just delights in ruining them. It's some kind of <laughs> sick pleasure for him that he can just ruin movies. He's a serial spoiler. He is. That's exactly. That's exactly. He's a serial spoiler. <laughs> he, gets, a... he gets gratification from ruining movies for people. Yeah. <laughs> it was just insane. That's the best way to describe him. That's exactly what he was. Oh, what a guy. So that was something. Um, well, if you're listening out there, I hope you're spoiling a pretty good movie for uh, a whole restaurant full of people right now, sir. Yes, sir. Indeed. Indeed. But, uh, yeah. Oh, wait. Is the, I think the band might be coming back. Oh, it, it looks like they're walking on stage. Walking on stage. Yeah. With three to get ready. That's from 1959. Uh, yeah, it's... Man, yeah, Billy it's the, uh, the MC. Right yes. The break with his classic Oh, we're going on another moment. break. Is what it, it looks Billy's like it's going on. Ah, darn it. He's doing uh, it. Go, the MC always p- coming out, getting their hopes up, and it's just another commercial break. Yeah, um, it's Carl Shaky Symbols Johnson. <laughs> that's right. That's the, uh, that's the guy. Oh man. Well, hopefully, it's, you know, they pick up the music again. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, that's, uh, that sounds like a pretty good weekend in my books, buddy. It was. It was exciting, and it was unique to say the least. Um, yeah, didn't do too much else this weekend. Um, you know, just the standard shopping and laundry and whatnot, and waiting for you to get home and as always singing yeah. <laughs> about you and you know the standard stuff whenever I am looking longingly out the window some of, some of you folks might not know this but every time that I open the door to my apartment both Zach and Parker just like leap up and start licking my face yeah like, it's like two dogs it's just it. we never we thought you'd never come back and, I was only gone for five minutes no, it's yeah just, he said I just know, took out the garbage the I, taking the garbage I don't know why you guys are what happened here um, and, but you know what I, I it's really endearing it it, it, you know what they say, man's best friend, roommates. And, yes. Uh, mm-hmm. You can't ask for much more than that. No, no. That's, yeah. yeah, and we're pretty well trained. Yes, yeah. For the most part. You only make in the house like once in a blue moon. Which yeah, I you got us those little ask. fake grass pads. That right. helped a lot, actually. I think that Gives really the direction things that really improved after exactly. that. Um, I run to the glass door a few times. That's you know, right. Here and there. That's I right. also sometimes I just bark at myself in the glass. Just the reflection. 
man. It's scary. It's, it is scary. You see a person and you're like, who the heck is that? He looks just like me. Why is he trying to impersonate me? Is that your red hot for this evening? You know what? That is my red hot. All and right, thank you, you know for bringing what? that up. I'm it's glad. time for red hot. Red, 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 red hot. Beep, 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 beep. Beep. Um, that's my red hot is seeing my reflection in glass or a mirror and thinking, who the heck is this? This poser pretending uh, to be me, you know? This is no Parker. This is just some sham, and I'm going to beat him up. And then that ends up with, you know, I break a lot of knuckles punching uh, those glass surfaces and mirrors. I know. Um, it, it's it's odd that at, like, no point so far have you been able to actually break through the glass, but we'll get you there. Yeah, I've never you. broken it, but I've broken a lot of myself, my own bones. You well, know? I'll tell you... When I'm real What's your red, red hot? Oh, I am red hot about this, I'll tell you right now. What is I, it? And I'm going to phrase it all up into one sing, single phrase. It, it, and it, it's, it is this. Um, there is no better form of birth control than watching other people's children at an airport. Yikes. I don't know what it is about airports that just bring out the absolute worst in children. But I see, you know, kids... They're always so sticky. They're always, like, running around screaming. Like, no one... I, I mean, like, I'm in a pretty bad mood on my own in the airport. But with children, that's, like, amplified. And I, lo I look at children in the airport. I'm like, yeah, I could easily just never be... This would be fine if this was, like, not a part of my life ever. Um, I... You know, I love kids. And I... You have to... I think... Come on. I mean, I think they're definitely worse behaved in airports than many other places. It, I agree. But it's like a but, cyclone of, like, horrible, like noise and I just I don't understand what, what about the airport like brings out the worst in I think the airport brings out the worst in a lot of people I think I think when I walk into an airport I I I'm just immediately stressed it's like <laughs> I need to get somewhere fast I need to, I'm I'm going to miss something something's going to go wrong I'm going to try to go through security something's going to be a muck you know I do I have a water bottle on me? There's so much to keep track of that could go wrong in an airport to me. You know, do I have my boarding pass? I'm an easily stressed person. And so I walk in there and my heart is already like pounding. I'm already sweating. Um, you know, I get to security. It's it, usually there's a long line. It's it's a wait. You worry about you're, getting you're the in gate a bad, on time. Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a hassle and you're in a bad mood. And I imagine but, if I was a little kid in that environment, it would be worse because... You don't really think far ahead to, you know, okay, once I get on the plane, it'll be fine. It'll be relaxing. I'll get to where I'm going. It'll be nice. You just kind of think, you know, I'm in this moment right now, and I can't really see beyond this moment, and this moment <laughs> sucks. I, I feel like that's what a kid probably thinks. That puts it in a little bit of perspective, but I'm going to... But I understand your I'm anger. Share I understand one, your anger. One, Go for it. Well, I'm going to share one, one little story is that... Um, I noticed, like, when I sat down, I was, like, working on a script when I was, like, waiting for my plane to go off. And there was a little kid there, or no, 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 backtracking a little bit. Um, I looked down and there's just like an orange in like the middle of the floor. Um, I'm sure it like fell out of somebody's bag and a part, and it was like kind of underneath like the seat. So like people like weren't like step on, stepping on it. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was there and I was like, you know, I was going to finish like what I was working on to get on the plane or whatever and throw the orange away. Um, but before I could do that, uh, this like dad and his little kid, uh, and the kid is just like, I don't know, covered in some sort of jam. I'm not really sure what flavor and if it was even jam to begin with. Yeah, it could but, have been raspberry, you know, strawberry. Who yeah, knows? this is very this very sticky kid is like trailing his dad. His dad's like, Alright, Johnny, we gotta go. We gotta like we gotta go to the other side. And this kid like like is like walking behind him and then he like sees the orange and his dad like turns around and is like, Johnny, come on, stop looking at the orange. And the kid just like stares at him, just stares at him, like says nothing, looks back down to the orange, like don't look at the, don't pick that up. And the kid just like walks over to the orange, stands in front of the orange, says, Johnny, just don't, don't pick that up. You know, there's no reason for him to pick up the orange. No. No. And then he go, and he's like, Johnny, let's, let's go. We got to go. We got to get on this flight. The kid picks up the orange. Well, that, uh, yeah. He brings it to his dad. He's like, <laughs> I don't want this orange. That's a dirty orange. It's a floor orange. It's go, a floor orange. Go put the orange back. So the orange. kid, so the kid just like looks at the orange and then hucks it like down the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even like put it back where it was supposed to be, which, or throw it away for that matter. And you know, a part of me blames like the dad for, you know, like realizing like, you know, your kid isn't intelligent enough to like, A, let the orange sit there or B, like, you know, do anything correctly with I it. I mean, the dad kind of asked for it if he just said, put the orange away. Like, if you say put 
something away and the kid is holding like a that spherical a object. Dude, that means a hunk it's it probably in the gonna be thrown. Again. Like <laughs> oh, that is <laughs> Don't look me in the rough. Don't tell me you you heard that story and you're like, oh yeah, I would totally want to be a part of that someday. Well, maybe not that moment. <laughs> no. I wouldn't want to be the orange dad. But You know you who's know. the orange dad? Who? Mr. Donald Trump. Boom! Oh. Mama Jama. Oh boy, he's got a thick coat. He um, is quite an orange man. He is very orange. Um, you know, we try to keep it light on this show. We don't try to bring in politics. But we every don't. once in a while, we'll throw we in... Do. a. I mean, like, it's so... He's like a walking joke factory. And not necessarily, like, like political things, even though there's a lot of material that you can say them. But he, even, like, conservative friends, you gotta admit, he's a funny, objectively funny-looking guy. He is. I <laughs> feel like we didn't even bring anything political into that. We just said... He's an orange man. And I f that's almost just an objective fact. Right. He is literally, a, like, if you looked at him and you were like, you know, race aside, yes. what, like, specific shade of color would you see this? Would you say that this man is? What hue? You probably say orange. Orange, exactly. I mean, any, like, on either, on either party, a, in either party, I feel like you just say, that is a relatively orange individual. It's, it's, a, sh it's a skin shade that ha I've only seen on Jersey Shore. Um, that's fair. And it's bad. That show's back. So maybe maybe it's going to be a hot new thing again. But, Orange is the new black, but, as they say. <laughs> that's indeed what they say. That's, you know, Netflix. You know, you know Netflix. Right? Takeover. It's yep. coming. Yep. Um, but, yes, yeah, so we can... I feel like that's, that's an area that at least, like, you know, conservatives... Can you at least, like, admit objectively funny guy? That, that, yeah. A, a funny-looking guy. His appearance is humorous. Yes. I mean, there's there's been several presidents whose appearances are humorous. Maybe none quite as humorous as this one. No, no, no maybe none none quite quite as outlandish. Just absurd. It's an absurd, an absurd sight. Exactly. Really. Yes. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I'm sure back in the day people were making fun of Lincoln. You know, he's a big ape ape man. He's a big, big lumbering, big, lumbering, tall, big eared guy. A Abe, honest Abe man. Honest Abe man. Yeah. They all called him on his tape. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, so, but um, yes, that's 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 what's got me red hot at the top of the hour. Well, I don't blame you. That's so. a, that's a rough story. That is uh, not the best. Uh, I'm sure my my views kid will story. I'm sure my views will change. Um, but for right now, don't want them to. Yeah. The moral is don't drop your oranges. Or yeah, sure. Maybe. Maybe. You know, that's one moral. That's the moral I'm taking away from it. Indeed. Um, Oh man, I, I just I feel like this concert's just never gonna pick up. Again. I know the music it, hasn't been, been playing on, forever. Forever, I feel like you know. It's like maybe the maybe the bands have eaten the Applebee's appetizers. Oh, you know what I th I think it is. What I think this place is getting shut down. I, I, oh, it, it's because and this is an actual fact. Uh, Coachella pretty much owns the right to like the the name Cella. So, oh yeah! Because wow. I have a their Chapman, our our alma mater, mm, uh, is yes. having is having the the Chapman Radio Music Festival uh, mm. this coming Sunday. Uh, shout out and highly uh, encourage our t uh, five listeners to check that out if you're in the uh, Orange County area. Um, yeah, maybe one and a half of them are. But they had to call it the Chapman Radio Music Festival this year because mm -hmm. last year it was Musco Cella because Musco right. is the name of the the big the concert hall. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, or the not the residence hall, the concert, the hall. concert hall. Yes, uh, and I guess like they got like a cease and desist order for this year because Coachella owns like the name Cella, so like there there can't be like a funded like che like no Cella or like so Cella or bro Cella like as like an official like thing you can make money off of. Yeah, that's kind of absurd to me. Yeah, that but, you can own the term cella, but okay. <laughs> try try naming your next character in your script Mickey Mouse, and let's see what happens. Well, there goes my script. <laughs> You're writing a lot of Mickey Mouse fan fiction. I mean, he. I had this idea for this character, and his name was Mickey Mouse, and he's a mouse, and he just you know is had a wife named Minnie, and it kind of like I thought it worked pretty well. He wears gloves for some reason. Yeah, he wears gloves. He's got a high voice. He you know. Well, I thought it was brilliant. And you might have to hit the drawing. Now I'm though. starting to think that it like somebody already got to it. I don't they know. might have. That's but disappointing. Indeed. I'm um, gonna have to workshop that for a while. Well, yeah. So I think the the concert 
hall is, uh, or this concert, this this alley is probably getting shut down. Probably for the best. It yeah, it needs to be condemned earlier than later. Yeah, people um, are in hazmat suits walking in, so I right. feel like that's probably not a good sign. Although I think the one jazz musician that's left is like trying to, I think he's going to play a note Oh, here. is he going to, whoa. Uh, a little bit up, of and piano. Them off. And there he goes. There he that goes. was quick. Yeah. yeah. No, that's all they got out of him. Yeah, that's, I thought that the hazmat suit people were like Ugh. like some kind of rave scenario where they were coming in with glow sticks yeah. well, or we'll something. We'll have to try to find the next concert. It are you going like to are. any concerts coming in soon? Concerts? You know, I don't really have any any planned concerts as of uh, the current moment. Mm. But hey. what you do, I believe. I do, yes. Right. I'm going to see my favorite band in the land, uh, Turnstile. Ah, um, yes. The hardcore group out of uh, Baltimore, Maryland, Maryland, and one member is from Ohio. They are very, oh. they're very adamant about making sure people know that that one member is from Ohio. Don't forget Ohio. Exactly. Often forgotten. Um, yeah. So I will be seeing them next weekend uh, down in Orange, and uh, it's Lovely. great. I, I love hardcore music. Um, mm-hmm. This might come as a, a little bit of a sh- shock to uh, some of our listeners, but I have a, I have kind of a a, uh, a uh, 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 aggressive side that doesn't come out like during my normal uh, out and about. Yeah, um, it's terrifying. So it all gets funneled into the kind of music that I listen to and hardcore music. I think you've heard samples of. Some I of have heard I heard a bit on our drives. Yes, and uh, how would you describe that music, Parker? Um, it's loud. It's angry. It's intense. It's definitely not the world's greatest musician, Jim Croce. It's very far from him. I, well, no one can ever be Jim. No Croce. one can ever be Jim. Croce. And considering that you know he's the only musician that you've ever heard outside of these jazz, wonderful jazz musicians yeah. you've heard like the little bits and pieces of today. Yeah. Um, you know, good good guy. What is music what? if not Jim Croce? Exactly. Apparently hardcore. Yes. Um, yeah, it's very loud. It's very. It's a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of mention of like the devil and death and stuff, but. You know, there's also a lot of songs that don't mention that, so that's that's I, that's I, just certain. I'm gonna, certain I'm gonna interject songs. there. I feel like I don't listen to a lot of satanic stuff. No, just oh, there were just a couple. No, there, there was, was the, there was the band Ghost, which features satanic imagery and some of that. That's not hardcore though. That's metal. Ah, well. So I don't understand what the difference is okay. for our listeners. So for our listeners, <clears throat> they're within the metal and punk. Uh, so it all kind of comes back to metal and punk. And uh, that sound you're listening is the We Found a Parking Space alarm. Woo! Woo! This is actually very rare in our neighborhood. This rarely happens where we can find a spot that uh, works. Um, And for the next 20 minutes, uh, it will only cost us 20 cents, and then it's totally free for the evening. Lovely. It's fantastic. That is Um, just fantastic. Uh, Anyway, hardcore. Yes, so with going back... There was the punk scene, which started in the 70s, and then by the end of the 70s and early 80s, metal started becoming a thing, mm-hmm. where you have a lot of hair metal, things like Metallica started coming into play, uh, hair metal like uh, 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 Rat, you have uh, Motley Crue, that's kind of a considered hair metal. On the other side with punk, punk had become like kind of uh, all about like the sex, drugs, and rock and roll kind of like aggressive side of music that can continued up until like around the mid 80s and then in the mid 80s you had in uh mostly like washington and new york uh a lot of kids that were kind of rejecting um the the kind of the sex and drugs the violence that kind of was happening within punk music and even though the music that they started creating was heavier and a little bit more metal based uh, they were all straight edge bands, and for those of you who don't know, straight edge is where you don't drink, you don't smoke. A lot of these guys are like vegans, and it's about like uh, animal rights and different things along those that nature. Mm-hmm. Um, so the hardcore scene kind of resulted into this really interesting uh, m- musical movement that centered around like positive mental energy and positive mental attitude. Uh, PMA is something that people say all the time. Uh, and they draw like X's across like their their uh, the top of their uh, hands as like a sign of um, being straight edge. It's like a straight edge sign. Hmm. So of course. So as metal kind of moved on in its own right, you have like kind of metal purists. You have new metal, which originated in the '90s uh, with bands like Slipknot, uh, Limp Bizkit. It's kind of like the rap metal kind of wave, and that's a bad example because it's way more like POD is a much better example of that. Um, but metal today is features like a whole lot of different genres and hardcore i really got into when i came back uh from germany and i got to see turnstile 
there in Munich, which is one of the best shows I've ever seen, because the Germans, as a people, are, uh, they're very polite, they're very, um, kind of restrained, very quiet, uh, and that's kind of, like, carried over into the, the hardcore show, where, you know, they're aggressive, and they're moving around and moshing, but, like, everyone was, like, catching someone that was, like, stage diving, mm. making sure that everyone was good, it was, like, it was a, one of the best concerts I've been to, um, so wow. I am... Not sure that that will be the same kind of mentality at the concert coming up soon because it's also going to be a pop punk concert, uh, and pop punk tends to be like a lot of kids. They're very uh, obsessed with pizza, Blink One Eighty Two, that kind of thing. Um, pizza, as in a pizza, band? as in like no, 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 actual pizza. Oh, like, we're literally weird, talking about pizza. There's this weird fascination within pop punk music that it's like pizza, like they're very pizza much time. about yeah, pizza time. Exactly. Wow. Yes. Interesting. Um, okay. So I like it might, pizza. It might be up your alley for a little little pop punk. Maybe it would. I just am confused why Turnstile wouldn't be metal if Turnstiles are made of oh, metal. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and that is the joke that puts me over the edge, and I will have to strangle Parker later And I tonight. just destroyed the show. Um, there it goes. Well, Wave it goodbye. It looks like we've arrived at our apartment earlier than we were anticipating. Indeed we have. Um, is there any final thoughts? Hmm. Hair metal. Are we talking about like a titanium wig? We are not, but that is an interesting concept, and I feel like a fashion trend that would be very popular in Los I Angeles. agree. We should work on that. Um, uh, I want to apologize real quick to our, our viewers. We were going to have a guest. It was a representative from Kremlin, Colorado. They were going to talk about uh, something positive about the town, kind of right. change their minds. Exactly. Unfortunately, couldn't come up with a single thing canceled at the last moment yeah so. we asked them about their speech they said we literally have nothing we've nothing. been working on it for weeks we have scoured the town they, kind of, they came up with nothing so uh you know what kremlin colorado continues to uh, disappoint us more so every day i am sorry to say so i think yes. we'll close out the show on that note indeed a nice negative note up oh, and as the, and the, the jazz as i live and being, breathe they're, they're being loaded into the police cruiser right now yes, and they're not and giving here up. they go there they, they are. Frisky. And there they go. And we'll never see them again. Indeed. All right.